In this video, we're going to be talking about an affine plane geometry. So an affine plane geometry is one that has these four postulates. And if you look, these are postulates that exist in the Euclidean geometry. So the Euclidean plane, one plane Euclidean geometry is, um, is an affine plane geometry. So we're taking this and we're taking just these four postulates and seeing what we can prove with them. So Euclidean geometry is an infinite affine plane, affine plane geometry, and there are some finite ones as well. So basically, there we're taking our existence and incidence postulates, uh, which we'll call one, two, and three here. Number one, there exist at least three non-collinear points. Postulate two, every line contains at least two points. Postulate 3, given any pair of distinct points, there exists exactly one line containing them. So two points determine a line. And now we're going to throw in the parallel postulate, and this is going to be stated the way Playfair um, uh, stated it. So given a line and a point not on it, there exists exactly one line containing that point that does not intersect the given line. And in this case, parallel will just mean uh, two lines that do not intersect because it's all going to be within one plane. So we know that the Euclidean geometry is going to be an affine plane, but there are also some, um, some non-Euclidean finite geometries that are also affine plane geometries. And let's see what we can do about building the smallest one possible. So what's the minimal amount that mu we must have for an affine plane geometry. Now let's see if we can build a minimal model. So we first of all we have to have at least three points A, B, and C by uh, postulate one. Okay. And we know these are non-collinear. So there exist distinct lines A, B containing the set A, B the line AC containing line points A and C, and line BC containing uh, the, the set BC. So what we're saying is the set AB is a subset of line AB. The, let me say that again the right way. The set AB is a subset of the line AB. Now it may be that the line AB is only those two points, or it may be many more. So certainly in Euclidean geometry it would be infinitely many points. So, statement one and postulate three, statement one says that we have these three points, and they're non-collinear. Okay, so they're not all on the same line. Um, it, furthermore, it says that if we have points A and B, uh, there's, there's a line containing them. That's postulate three. So, out of those three points, there are three sets of two, and each of those three sets of two uh, is a line, and there's only one line containing uh, each of those sets. So, for example, there's only one line containing A and B, so we can call it line AB, whether it contains more points or not. And certainly we've not shown that this is all the points. In a, in a minimal geometry, it's going to turn out this is going to be the entire line. But, of course, we could have, have affine planes where there are more points per line. Okay, so there exists a fourth line that's distinct from the three generated thus far. How do we know this? Well, each of these lines intersect. And there is a line, given a line and a point not on a line, so given A, B and a point C that's not on the line. Okay. And I'll let me back up and hit one more point in, in point two. I've said that these three lines are actually distinct. And why do we know they're distinct? Okay, uh, statement one guarantees that they're extinct, not extinct, distinct, uh, because um, they're not all on the same line. If these were, if these points were, if BC line was the same as AC, those would be all three on the same line. And we have said that points A, B, and C are not on the same line. Now, by the way, let me make sure you understand this. 
this does not mean that you can't have three points on the same line. It just says that there, there are some three points which are not on the same line, and we've given them names A, B, and C. So those specific points A, B, and C are not all on the same line. But line A, B might have three points on it. It might have even infinitely many points on it. So there's a fourth line that's got to be parallel here to line AB, and it's got to go through C parallel. So it does not contain any of the points uh, of A and uh, either A or B, or any other point that's on line AB. Well, now what do we have? Now that we have this line, what do we know about lines? Which postulate says, if you have a line, then what happens? Okay. Postulate 2 says, if we have a line, it must have at least two points. Well, we have one point on this line, point C. It must have a, third po uh, a second point, at least, on that line, which is a point D. So now we've got at least a fourth point, distinct from A and B and C, that's on this fourth line from the statement 3. And, of course, we use statement 3 and postulate 2. Now what do we know? Well, but every two points determine a unique line. So there is a given two, any pair of distinct points, there exists a line and exactly one line containing them. So we should be able to connect D up not only with C but with A and B. Um, okay, before I've done that, I've said... We call the line from statement 3 line CD, because once you have two points on it, we know for sure which one it is. Notice that no point of CD is on AB, and no point other than C is on either AC or BC. Now, we can use this name because postulate 3 says that two points determine a unique line. By statement 3, CD is parallel to AB. So if D or any other point on CD besides C were on B, C, or C, D, then they would be the same line contradicting statement 3. And similarly, C, D cannot have any point on A, C except for C. Now let's get those other lines. So now we have additional lines B, D, and A, D containing the sets B, D, and A, D. And again, these lines, statement 1 and postulate 3 says that there's a unique line containing each of these pairs of points. Statement 1 guarantees these are all distinct lines. And note that we, note that we have not shown, nor can we show, that these are the only two points. But this does generate a minimal model because the model we have right here does, in fact, give us a minimal size uh, affine plane. So the minimal number of points in any affine plane is 4 and the middle, minimal number of lines is 6. Uh, 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 6, yeah. should say 6. Okay, so every affine plane must contain at least 4 points at 6 lines. And so the following model we've developed shows that they, you can make one uh, with exactly that. So in fact, this is a minimal model. Now, there may be more points and more lines. For example, I could go here and, uh, for example, I might be able to produce another point on this line. Well, if we do that, what, is that, what does that force us to have? Well, um, that forces us to have lines going to this one and to this one. Okay, there has to be a unique parallel to each of these lines. Okay, so this one, there's a unique parallel to this one here. And so, so sure enough, there he is. It's this one up here. Okay, so that's the same, same parallel. Okay, well, what else does that tell us? Um, could, this, could this be all of it? 
and so forth. So I'm going to let you guys experiment with those ideas a bit on your own. We may come back to that later. But this is a model for an affine plane. And so an affine plane turns out to be uh, an important type of geometry that actually has some research into these, uh, into these um, types of, of situations here, these types of planes. And there's some interesting, maybe not so obvious, uh, postulates that come up with affine planes. We may go into that a little bit later on. But for now, I think I'm going to basically leave it at, at this for this particular video.